The United States is the greatest force for good in the world. We have not an obligation to go out and start wars, but certainly to spread democracy and freedom throughout the world. The defense budget is three quarters of a trillion dollars. Profits went up last year well over 25%. When war becomes that profitable, you're going to see more of it. There is a huge flow of cash into defense industry. $66 billion for our men and women in uniform. The $100 million to upgrade 10 additional B-1 bombers. You do have to follow the money. It's the representative's duty to bring home the bacon. God bless our contractors. Now, kids are dying. Billions are being spent every month. And the American people are scratching their heads going, how do we get here? This is not about one president or one party. When does the United States go from a force for good to a force of imperialism? We've got an empire. There is no excuse for 725 American military bases in 130 foreign countries. I think numbers almost are distracting. 9-11 showed us war can be privatized. Destruction can be privatized. What we are risking is the republic itself. Collusion is our business. Collusion with the military. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. Move! 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 Here is the most devastating of all threats we can have in a democracy. My friend kept saying they did this in Germany. The great dictators learned from one another what was essentially a blueprint for closing down an open society. The founders wrote the Constitution and the Bill of Rights with fear. People were hung for speaking up. I'm calling on the Attorney General to begin a criminal investigation of the New York Times. And I am continuing and I am increasing the search for every possible path to peace. This is what the war in Vietnam is all about. We maintain our strength in order to deter and defend against aggression, to preserve freedom and peace. Our desire for peace. The United States wants peace. We seek peace. We strive for peace. We expect every American to support our military, and if they can't do that, to shut up. Well, Colonel, it's a great way to go to war. Short of a bullet to the back of his head or he, he leaves the country, uh, war is inexorable. War is inevitable, and it is approaching inexorably. Right. You know, let's not just stop I, at a couple of cruise missiles. <laughs> we'll <laughs> pound them with 2,000-pound bombs and then go 2, in. 2,000-pound bombs in urban areas? Oh, sure. We have a number of correspondents in bed with our troops. Very deeply embedded in a personal way. With the sources that have deceived us so constantly don't deserve our trust. It then emerged that Aaron Brown of CNN reported from a rooftop overlooking Ground Zero that Building 7 had collapsed over an hour before it actually fell. We are getting information now that one of the other buildings, Building 7, in the World Trade Center complex is on fire and has either collapsed or is collapsing. Oh, really? You heard that some people think it's the government? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. It's a very convenient way of ensuring there is fear, uh, of ensuring that there is control. Uh, well, apparently, us what was working for British intelligence. I think people should give up their liberty for freedom. Thermite had to be planted in the buildings, which, of course, implies directly an inside job. Someone had to have access into the building. We watched the building collapse. My friends, never give up your liberty. Stand up against tyranny, learn the truth, and find out who has the motive. And you realize that if they would do it in the 60s, they'll do it again. If it works once, it'll work again. It's about, it's about greed and power, and it's nothing about keeping America safe. George Bush carried out 9-11. Do you think some people in a cave, do you think some people in a cave were able to have Norad stand out?
What happens if your, your own government is using more force and more coercion on its own citizens for the purpose of achieving its political ends? Is that government engaged in terrorism? American people expect us to protect them and protect their civil liberties. I'm going to do that. What is being sold to the American people today as Americanism, if you peel off the label, you find so much similarity to what we were fighting against when we were fighting communism and Nazism and fascism. The government's now putting a national ID card together. We will be carrying our papers and they have recommended there be checkpoints uh, throughout the country. Some type of a physical proof, such as fingerprints or retinal prints, have to be on it. Desires of the people really have no consequence. They go out and they vote. Doesn't make any difference which candidate they elect. Mr. Curtis, are there programs that can be used to secretly fix elections? Yes. This is absolutely Orwellian. I mean, it's talking about Big Brother looking over your shoulder at absolutely everything you do. In the mid-1990s, building on technologies that use gene splicing, the Green Revolution turned into the Gene Revolution. Capitalizing on the new technology, Monsanto genetically modified its seeds to be Roundup ready. Normally, Roundup kills anything green. But if the plant is Roundup ready, when it is sprayed, it doesn't die. Now the company that sells you the herbicide also sells you the seed. A generation ago, Farmers would seed a crop and use uh, a herbicide when necessary, but often they wouldn't need to use a herbicide. And today you have a crop that, right when it goes in the ground, is designed to be sprayed. With Monsanto's BT corn, the corn itself is registered as an insecticide. This is because every cell has been engineered to manufacture BT, a natural bacterial toxin. This series is about how those in power have used Freud's theories to try and control the dangerous crowd in an age of mass democracy. At the heart of the story is not just Sigmund Freud, but other members of the Freud family. This episode is about Freud's American nephew, Edward Bernays. Bernays is almost completely unknown today, but his influence on the 20th century was nearly as great as his uncle's. Because Bernays was the first person to take Freud's ideas about human beings and use them to manipulate the masses. He showed American corporations for the first time how they could make people want things they didn't need by linking mass-produced goods to their unconscious desires. Out of this would come a new political idea of how to control the masses. By satisfying people's inner selfish desires, one made them happy and thus docile. It was the start of the all-consuming self which has come to dominate our world today. What is a corporation? It is under the law a legal person. These are a special kind of person who have no moral conscience, designed by law to be concerned only for their stockholders. I just can't be personally responsible. Maybe you'd better incorporate. There are companies that make our lives better, and that's a good thing. The problem comes in the profit motivation. Liz Claiborne jackets, $178, and the workers were paid 74 cents. Nike assigns a time frame, 6.6 .6 minutes to make the shirt. That means the wages come to three tenths of 1% of the retail price. Of course they make a profit, and it's a good thing. In our search for wealth and for prosperity, we created something that's going to destroy us. I never gave a thought to what we were taking from the earth. I didn't have an environmental vision. In there is opportunity. When the September 11 situation happened, the first thing you thought about was, well, how much is gold up? Hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin. The destroyer was carrying out a, a mission of patrol in those waters, in international waters. Weapons of mass destruction. Uranium from Africa. Cyber attacks. Nuclear program. Biological weapons. Rack has weapons of mass destruction. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> We're not leaving.
so long as I'm the president. That would be a huge mistake. If this little nation goes down the drain and can't maintain her independence, ask yourself what's going to happen to all the other little nations. It would not bring peace. It would bring more war.